Yeah. So um, we have spent a number of sessions together, and you were starting out with fibromyalgia, I remember, was the reason that we got together online um, the first time. And fibromyalgia and uh, uh, neurally mediated syncope attacks, uh, uh, sort of the fight or flight response not uh, be, being much, much overactive and uh, that causing all sorts of problems and uh, wow, just so helpful in that regard too. Yeah, and I remember, well actually we have your, um, what you wrote first about kind of how you were feeling prior to us starting any sessions in your history of all the fibromyalgia and really the, a lot of different things and stuff like that, but um, kind of before we get started today, you want to take a minute and just say kind of what the difference has been for you with uh, using, first we were doing EFT and tapping and then we moved over to uh, the ICE method pretty quickly. Yeah, you, you were trying it out at the time, and uh, we just sort of, I, I was open and I could understand what you were talking about and uh, have at least enough of a, a reference background and moved right th into that, and uh, that was that was a lot more effective for me uh, because it helped me become present and stop thinking about whatever the heck was bothering me at any given moment, whether it be physical pain or a, uh, you know, worry or whatnot. But uh, with the, uh, the EFT helped with uh, the legs and uh, the fibro pain in my extremities. Uh, but the, the ice method really pulled me back into this moment of calm and truly pain-free sort of zen serenity. I mean, it was remind it, it, it made me think of when people talk about how well meditation works for them, and meditation, or at least any method that I'd ever attempted has never really worked for me. But the ICE method, uh, it was real easy to get my body to stop. And uh, these, uh, the, the syncope the heart shocking attacks uh, uh, were being prevented. I could I could stop them, you know, before before it got too bad, and it got to be such a. Uh, I I kept doing it to the point where my my body no longer had this overreaction to stimuli. Like my cat would meow and I my heart wouldn't race anymore because I'd finally calm down over a long enough period of time and it got to be more uh, uh, finding a calm state was the habit as opposed to the jump up have to do something state you know what's wrong what's what, what's going on what's the emergency and uh, between that and its overall effect on not pumping adrenaline into my system left and right uh, has improved my quality of life to no end. Sleeping better, uh, staying asleep, better quality of sleep, um, fewer attacks, uh, better mental focus, better outlook, better better default outlook on things. Um, and uh, I do uh, I've gotten my master's teaching level in Reiki and to be perfectly honest I find the two blend really well in that it's I tend to do the ice method before you know tapping into a, the source of uh, sort of for Reiki for me so it's not uh, so draining I mean it's just been a, a, a wonderful useful tool as well as a uh, a, a treatment and uh, it's almost like a physical therapy thing. Yeah, that's really great. You know, um, it sounds like you're continuing to, to apply it to your life. I know that for some people, you know, we'll get started with our session here in a little bit, but it's curious to me because for some people, it's, it seems like um, they, they learn the method, they have incredible results with it for fibromyalgia or whatever it is, and then um, 
instead of continuing to remember to use the ICE method, whenever that fight or flight um, system gets gets triggered, um, they end up back in that stress state. And and you seem to be able to continue going back to ICE and using it just sort of in a natural way. Um, any thoughts on that? Like what helps a person to to choose or to be aware or to make that decision to use ICE rather than just end up back in, in the um, in the stress state. And I know occasionally you do end up back in the stress state and stay there for a little while too. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Um, honestly, uh, I know I'm, for so many reasons, I am not the, the stick by which anybody should be measured. But um, I do know a lot of it comes with uh, self-awareness, um, taking the time out to really listen to your body and what it has to say. And through my, through the illness progressions that I've had over the past few years, I really had to be aware and listening to my body because it, uh, some of the signals it would send would give me very little time to do get to points of safety to do certain things to take certain meds um, and uh, that was great but on the flip side it was also building up this conditioned response to sort of panic whenever any of these little triggers went off which is what was you know expediting the uh, right or, yeah or increasing the, the syncope problems um, for me, it's it it took a, it did take a while, and sometimes I do forget. Um, and it, it it's always easier when I'm you know when I have another person to do the ice method method with. But even taking a few moments out just to you know do the look space, or for me, and the way we started doing it was. Uh, uh, and I don't know how you do it now, but we're talking about stepping back, stepping back. And um, I keep that in my head because I realize that the situation is out of control. My thoughts are racing. My heart is racing. And I mm -hmm. want to step back away from that. And it's because I want it to stop. And it's easy uh, uh, if you're aware it's going on the next thing that's going to come up is you really do want it to stop. And if you, I think if you keep it the ICE method or whichever methodology you choose, uh, if you just remember that you do have options and to, to taking a step back, uh, that sort of mantra uh, that we started with, worked so well for me it's always stuck in my head and that's been one of the key sort of triggers so if something happens and I think step back um, okay I think that's nice. really sort of it yeah well that's it's really useful for me um, to be hearing kind of your experience with it on sort of an ongoing basis um, because I think once a person understands this it's like it's an amazingly powerful tool and once we get some experience with it but then just choosing to come back to it at those appropriate moments when we're stressed. Normally when we get stressed, it's like, well, I'm going to react to that. Um, and instead what you're saying is to step back or to not react or to become unreactive or calm. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the trick to learn, it seems like, um, to get enough experience that we trust that, wow, getting calm about this would, would be uh, actually a, a useful thing in this situation. Well... Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I know for some people, <clears throat> the the idea of being able to calm down at all from anything is is uh, once ramped up is is inconceivable, and uh, it helps that by and large I'm naturally a calm person, and most of these uh, incidents run counter to my natural state, so it's a little easier for me to pick it up if I. Uh, it's how I. First, started noticing that they were symptoms in the first place. Was that I'd be irrationally angry about some woman's hoopy earrings, which was, it was just so odd that even as I was angry at her dangly earrings, 
I realize the absurdity of it. So it's it, it's not too difficult for me to step outside myself, but really just I mean it's almost like anger management in a way. It's really just you know taking a deep breath and stepping back and putting some kind of space between you and the situation, even if it's just mental space. And the ice method was really helpful for that because it, uh, you know, stop the mind, stop the body. If you can stop one, it's easier to stop the other, and uh, whichever one works for the individual. But uh, for me, after, after about six months, it became habit. I mean, it probably was habit before that, but... I I I actually noticed that it was habit after six months. Mm -hmm. I think it was about maybe. Well, that's awesome. I mean, go yeah, ahead. I was gonna say maybe even less because I it was it was around uh, it was around New Year's or whatever, and I think we started at the end of the summer, so probably even less. Yeah. Well, that's that's. Um... Great. The ironic thing for me is that ice actually, in and of itself, is not. Um, it's not uh, rewiring the brain to be to do a new habit. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's a habit to come to it, but then ice itself is really just the moving into the calm space. And then with the memory reconsolidation, um, the peptides are replacing in the synapses in the brain. Um, so we're not actually building a new habit about a particular thing. We're moving into a calm space about that particular thing. But so there's a it's a really significant difference that we do need to develop this habit of doing ice, mm -hmm. but ice itself doesn't work on the same mechanism. You know, it's not building new pathways in our brain, um, but we have to build a new pathway to, to actually even do the ice in the first place. So it's always a little bit of a subtle, subtle thing. But I wanted also to um, check in with you. The original reason that, that we got together. Um, and it was so great. It was actually a cousin of yours that, that uh, yeah. found, found uh, me and hooked us up together online. Uh, we did these sessions by Skype. I mean, you live many states away, <clears throat> and it's worked uh, equally effectively as as uh, office sessions, you know, in person right here in Chelan. Yeah. But I wanted to just check in now. You really had severe fibromyalgia pain, and I remember your leg pain was just, uh, I forget if it was left or right leg, but it was just... Uh, terribly painful to you and I remember that went away like in the first 15 minutes of us uh, starting to work together. It did. I was a, a couple of sessions I almost wanted to cancel the first couple times or move back because I was hurting so bad I didn't think I could even focus on what anybody would be saying and uh, or let alone put, put two words together and with the the overlaying of the past memories uh, with uh, with the better peptides, that that truly is is such a blessing, and and I have uh, recommended that to a couple of my friends, and one in particular, I don't know if he's gotten in touch with you yet or not, but um, and I wanted to make comment just because uh, it it dawned on me the other night it. Uh, that now sometimes when I'm in that weird panic mode where I'm or in the syncope, the, the, the physical state is coming up, it's almost like my mind is trying to grab things, new past troubles or unpleasantness or things that I haven't gone over with the new peptides because it doesn't have the old things to latch on to. Mm, the, the old pathways for bad stuff. So it's trying to find something new, and it's odd, but I, I was aware of what it was trying to do, so I was thinking, I just need to go over all, all the rest of that, and it, it's eventually going to stop breaching, I think. But um, it was this sort of mini-revelation as I was driving that it's I'm trying to find things that make me angry or ups, or my... my, hmm. my Mind is trying to find these things to you know feed the process and and uh, it's not coming up with the big ones because we have gone over the big ones and I can I honestly don't remember most of what they are anymore because they're not that significant. Yeah, it is sort of it's it's a marvelous transition from that reactive state to non-reactive, or as you say, sort of yeah. that step back state. In terms of the fibromyalgia, um, 
what's your experience of the fibromyalgia symptoms now? Um, it varies. Um, I uh, I was real grateful for it because uh, with change of doctors and change of things and change of laws, I was forced to take less of my pain medication than I had been taking before, and uh, I still am. Uh, and I was not, it wasn't quite enough to cover everything to begin with. And uh, now it's at the point where with both of them, I'm, you know, unless I've got some really bad day or there's something really funky going on, something extra, I, I do all right. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have, I mean, there will be some days where I, I just, I am just super uber hypersensitive and nothing's going to change that. But those are not the, uh, those are the exception to the rule. Most of the time, um, uh, you know, I don't worry about bumping into objects anymore because it's going to hurt. Um, I can hold things without pain or numbness. You know, I just, I don't have the symptoms without some real something really really big behind it not, not none of these casual little things causing these huge uh, amount of pain and okay. yeah. uh, it's just been oh just thinking back it's just been such a relief because it's been s s difficult years especially and this has just been Extremely helpful. Yeah, well, I'm, of course, really glad about that. Um, and I remember after we did, I forget if it was three or four sessions together, um, you know, and you were, you were basically bedridden for those first ones. Um, yeah. You started driving again, going out with your friends. I remember you were saying you were so exhausted because you were staying out so late with your friends. And I know. Yeah. And back to like a regular routine after yeah, years was... and years of not having that routine at all, if I remember right. Right, it was it was actually having a life again, and uh, that was that was before uh, that was uh, wow, gosh, time, yeah, that was actually before uh, they forced me to reduce all my meds, and they changed they changed a whole bunch of stuff with it. But the long and short of it was, uh, I'm actually just recently back on everything that I was back then to help with fatigue and everything else, and. I'm starting to do really well again, so I, I wanted to, I've been grateful for this for a refresher, but truly, I was getting out, I was driving, uh, that year uh, in particular, and uh, uh, I would not drive more than five miles from my house, safe, I wouldn't feel safe, uh, nobody I know lives you know, within 25 miles of, of oh, okay. at least. So um, I was visiting people in person. I was going to game nights. Um, I was driving home. I was getting involved with some local charities that my friends were involved with. And, uh, uh, you know, I was really having a life again. And it uh, was, I mean, the key there was what I learned through the ice method. I mean, there's no mm -hmm. there's no if ands or buts about it for me because there was no change in medication and there was no. I mean, the, the only the only change was the fact that uh, I was doing this and going over this and uh, helping to get rid of some past baggage and just make make my life lighter as well as, you know, just reducing the pain. And it, and we would go back from the calm state into the pain state, and it would just, I would just be surprised. The pain would come back or the, the stomach ache or the nausea or just, I mean, I know, you know, I've known for, since I was a kid that y your, your mind and your emotions can affect how you feel. I mean, butterflies in the stomach not is is the s simplest uh, example, but it was just amazing. I mean, the 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 horrible leg pain that I had that could only be uh, methadone. I mean, truly strong 
strong uh, stuff. You walked me through with the ice, and it just melted. It just sort of released and melted. And then we would move forward again, and it would pick up. But it wouldn't be as strong, but it would come back. But it would. It, but it, it was the exact correlation as we step forward and as we step back. Yeah, I remember... Um... You know, some of those memories that you had were from very, very early on, and I remember there were even nightmares that were involved in recurring. And uh, it's one of the things that I just love about this method of ice is actually being able to go back and experience the emotion that comes up with those, and then literally um, being able to move to a different state and then bring calm peptides, calm chemistry back to it, and them going away, uh, which then made that permanent difference in your your physical well-being. So. Um, I, I do remember that, and that was really profound to to be a witness to that happening for you. And I and I need to I need to remember that too, and 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 do it because to me I just had the image when as you were describing it, sort of the image of just going over an old VCR tape and uh, taping over it with a with a better experience or with a a better yeah, you know, mm-hmm. a, a better path, literally changing the past in a way, and uh, as far as you know, memories are concerned, or whatever, and uh, it worked, and it worked so well because there were some, there were some really bad things, and it wasn't until, it wasn't until about the time I I started seeking out help that uh, I really realized how much they still sort of hang on and add and and uh, pile up down the road and mm-hmm. uh, just to let those go and to, to, to you it's, it's so funny because I know there were several of them and I can only think of one just because it's so hugely major and I know there were several that that we went over and er, you know just just overdid the peptides and I just cannot recall what those incidents were and that's that's great because there's 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 no problem with my long term <laughs> memory. I'll tell you that. So, right, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so that's great. I appreciate you providing that review, and and uh, since we're going to make a make this available to other people, it's going to be really useful to them to just kind of hear about what your journey has been over this past year um, of using the ice method. And um, but I thought what we'd do now is, is uh, spend some time just uh, using the ICE method on what's, what's currently available and just kind of listening to your story about how um, all the medications got changed and it was really a setback for you. I thought maybe that would be a, a place that we might want to start. Okay. Um, in, uh, well, after that, that sort of, it was actually this time, not last where was it last year? Wow. Yeah, I guess it was this time last year. Um, last October uh, was about the time when I was really, really active. Uh, I was going to do some some charity work, some uh, ha- Halloween fundraiser thing, and uh, we started to slow down with the game nights and everything, and prepare for. Uh, you know the coming holidays and everyone's changing schedules, especially with all the the, the different belief systems <laughs> that, that our group has. Um, so uh, that's about the time. October was the time that uh, my uh, my primary care doctor told me that he was retiring and uh, retiring from private practice, and and he was going to work with VA. And he had been my doctor for half my life through so many tough struggles through through getting me to the the uh, Mayo Clinic through all this and uh, you know one of the the if every doctor was like him the world would be such a better place but mm-hmm. um, at any rate uh, uh, he was needing to, to slow down and retire and, and he said at least I've got you in a really great place now, and so I don't feel bad leaving you in the lurch. And I uh, and I we we agreed. We we did not have any problems. And mm-hmm. then the very next week, 
I go to see my pain clinic and my pain clinic doctor is retiring from practice permanently. Now that doctor was 85, has written so many books, has five different doctorates, uh, law, you know, 53 years of, in the field of, of all this stuff. So he was he was a big major figure, but uh, he was also one of the only real people to go to for a long distance. A lot of my other patients, uh, my fellow patients, were driving three hours to get there mm -hmm. from other states, and. Uh, we were told everything would go, you know, as he did it. And uh, for whatever reason, my <coughs> state had decided to put uh, restrictions on what certain meds would be allowed for what. And it was very obvious to anybody who had even a, a, a mild... Uh, medical education that uh, nobody with any medical background uh, had any input into what these were. I mean, uh, restrictions on on pain meds at such a high unless they can be seen by X-ray and you know so many things. That's why they have MRIs. Is so many things cannot be seen by X-ray, mm -hmm. uh, but would require you know the pain meds. So. Um, Starting through this year, it was it was really hell. They they took me to half of what I was on before for the the methadone. Uh, they could not prescribe uh, a couple of the other medicines that I was on because uh, the new doctor did not have the five doctorates that uh, Doctor Cochran had, and uh, it. I've spent most of this year trying to find doctors to replace uh, the one person that was giving me everything, and mm -hmm. um, it was—I mean, it's—it has been. It, and just now, am I back on everything that I was on before, even even if it's not the same amount? Um, and the difference is, I'm starting to get out there again. I'm starting to do stuff. I mean, it's—it's it's all coming back, but. Really, I mean, I shudder to think what I would have had to gone through if I did not have the ice method uh, as a tool in my, in, you know, in my arsenal because it's been a, it's it's been a very isolated, been a very frustrating, uh, fearful, painful year, but I've been able to have these moments, these stepping back moments, and um, not panicking, not, I mean, just not having anywhere near the easy triggers for the fibro, easy triggers for the, the heart problems, easy, easy triggers for everything. Mm -hmm. It was always uh, uh, the fuse got longer, and um, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd hear your words, and you know, about uh, making sure the body is only occupied with this thing, so it's not worried about this or that. It's not trying to do all these other stuff. It's just focusing on this one point or. Uh, and you know, just several other things would come to mind because uh, I didn't have, I couldn't, I honestly couldn't think of another way to cope because there's the the pain of fibro is so well, any type of chronic pain is so insistent. It takes up so much mental focus and brain space. It's like trying to hear, trying to pick out one conversation in a crowded banquet hall at the end of the uh, at the end of the room, and uh, trying to maintain that kind of focus mm -hmm. just to have somebody in front of you. And uh, and it varies. It could be worse or less, but I mean that's that's where it gets, especially when your mental 
you know, your mental shields and your your patience and your hope and all that other stuff just starts to wear really thin and it's hard to recover from that. And the just the energized and warming feelings of just the times you've, the, the, especially the first couple of times you walked me back, and it was so funny because the first time you, you, you know, you just said step back, step back, and I think you did three step backs, and I was there, and I was mm -hmm. just sort of almost blissed out in this <clears throat> uh, pleasant state, and uh, it was harder for me to to get there without your guidance, because I mean, it it this the miracle of modern technology, but. Um, it's on an energetic level. It's just like having you in the room when we do this, and uh, it was just so comforting and so easy. And um, but the techniques were valid, and I trusted them, and I trusted you, and uh, I, I had seen the results. I mean, I'd felt the results. Right. So, so I kept, I kept <clears throat> with, even though I didn't. I personally, now I'm sure other people probably don't have. Uh, is difficult. Uh, mostly, I just uh, I. It's harder for me to be self reliant in certain things. I like following somebody, or I like in 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 these techniques and regards and and things like that. So it's a uh, that's my personal thing. It may not be somebody else's trouble, but. Uh, they were still beneficial. They still gave me the break that I needed. But uh, uh, it's been yeah. I know you say it, it's it's not about making new pathways, but and it's true. But I think by just taking the time to 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 just be present. To, to take that time to stop and to step back and to, to be in source. It allows for old pathways to close and new pathways to open, even though it's not burning them themselves. It's sort of like... Uh, yeah. It, that's just how, it, that's how it's felt. That's how it's felt this past year. Well, and I, I think that's right. I mean, I actually think that what you just said is, is how it works. Um, but it, it's a very subtle distinction because the ICE method simply replaces the, the things that are not calm. So now we become free mm -hmm. to create the pathways that we want to instead of in reaction to, you know, whatever stored anger or anxiety or fear that we might have. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a subtle, tricky thing, but I, exactly what you said is, is my experience of, of it. Um, so what I thought we might do if you're up for it is is to pay attention to the medicines. You've had a huge amount of experience um, this past year with um, the regular dosage and then being taken off and then partial dose and now being at a state um, where it's not the same as before but it's having good effect. Mm -hmm. um, and I have no idea what will happen. I actually never have any idea what will happen in an ice method session. But um, and ours tend to be pretty strong. <laughs> that's right. And I and I know that there are um, just from what you said, and you actually used the words, um, very strong emotions tied to the experiences of this past year relative um, to um, the medications and the prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So if you're up for it. Um, how about you mentioned methadone, but if you're going to say there's one uh, one of the medications that um, we we'll just start with, one. I'm not saying there's only one, but take one of them that the absence of it uh, was causing you a strong emotion, either fear, anxiety, anger, whatever. Um, and let me know when you you've identified one of those medications. Give me a second, because there, there's really there's really two. The, all the, okay. all the rest are supplemental. It's uh, and I just recently went back on it. It was a combination of uh, the methadone and uh, Adderall. I was on stimulant therapy. Okay. And, uh, so so take those two medications in your mind, and this journey that you've had with them the past year. You were in a in a stable state with your 
uh, doctor who retired, mm -hmm. and then you were completely taken off him, and now you've you've had really a, a yeoman's journey of finding uh, resources for yourself now in this in this past year. Mm -hmm. And if you just observe that. Um, what's the uh, what's what emotion show up there? Is it anger? Is it fear? Anxiety? What what's showing up? Sadness. Uh, yes, sadness. Um, grief. Because okay. I think grief is more can uh, teary eyed. This. Sort of walking wounded um, trauma. I mean, really, it 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 was being off it. The fear there there is fear and everything, but at what comes strongest now is a is a grief is a. a, a muscle weakening shaky, just sort of shock and trauma feeling with it. Okay. So like for somebody who wasn't familiar with this, you've just done the identify part of the ICE method. Okay. So we took an actual experience, and there can be three things that we identify, either an experience, an actual emotion, or physical feeling. Started with this experience of um, the Madison journey of the past year. And are, are there then emotions? Yeah, well, there's direct emotions tied to, tied to that fear, grief, sadness. You know, and those emotions usually fall into one of three, which is an anger or a fear or a sadness. You know, and the grief mm -hmm. is uh, some sadness and maybe some anger, too. And in definitely there, you know, it has the components of it. Bit free. And then so there's a, a physical piece, an emotion, and... Uh, I'm sorry, and then the third piece could actually be a physical sensation, which you said, my body feels weak and shaky, okay? Mm -hmm. so, um, so you just did all of those identify pieces. And, you know, the use here for me being with you in this situation is just like, okay, so my buddy's had a, a rough year. There's an experience. Now let's pay attention to the emotion, the experiences of it, so now we've identified something we can actually reconsolidate. And to do that, we need to move out to the calm state. And so um, just as a review of that, I'm going to invite you to observe a single point. And when you observe that single point, what you've done from just a moment ago being reactive to this whole past year is you're now focused on a single point. And so your consciousness, your energy of who you are is now observing a single point. And because it's observing a single point, there's really not much there to observe. There's very little that needs a reaction. You are reacting to this thing in your external environment. It's the only thing you're reacting to now, that single point. Because that's simple, your body um, actually moves into a more relaxed state just as you observe the single point. Now we're going to choose a second point. And when you observe that, the exact same thing, the reason we're doing that is because between any two points is a space that has nothing in it. You observe the second point, and now observe that between those two points, there's a space that has nothing in it. Behind it might be a wall or whatever, or a window. But between two points is a space that's empty. And when you observe a space that has nothing in it, there's nothing in the outside world that needs your attention. And when you're in the state of observing nothing in the outside world, your body gets the signal that, hey, it doesn't have to do anything out there, it moves into rest and restoration mode, your fight or flight system is completely turned off. And you're now producing a different chemistry in your body. Peptides are produced that correspond to your emotions. And right now, you're having no emotional reaction to the outside world. You're producing a peptide of calm that flows out to all the cells of your body. The cell membranes open, communicate with each other. Literally, the cells can be getting rid of waste, taking in energy, repairing the DNA strand, communicating with other systems and organs, all for the pre-programmed natural um, way of being, which is to attend to your health. And I can see, just as I watch you, um, you're in a different state. Mm. 
You're in a very you're in a so calm state. Was, uh, was uh, real quick as soon as I it, as soon as I moved over to the second point, I started feeling a significant difference because I was having some pain in my leg, mm -hmm. and uh, especially talking about the the past year and stuff like that. And, um, right, and note second. how just talking about and paying attention to that. There's a different consciousness. You're producing a different molecule in your brain that corresponds to that. And your body is is getting those same signals and responding with an increased level of pain. Yeah. It's very interesting, very quick. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I you told me about some of the people you'd help with migraines, and I just thought, you know, as a – I still occasionally get them, but I used to – debilitating. And – uh it was just, I just could not, I mean, I believed it, but I, you know, could not imagine it going away and then coming back like that. I mean, it's always been for me, you know, I'd wake up and it'd be gone or something like that. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but to, to have a, the equivalent of a migraine in my leg, uh, and to feel it dissipate and even right now as, as you know, you're talking about the uh, I always want to save the explanation you do because so, something about my body hearing that as well while I do it I think mm -hmm. it just helps me immensely because I moved to the the in-between point and it I literally was looking at, at the wall behind two objects and uh, just this sort of it felt like the cells and the individual muscle tissue in my feet and uh, my legs uh, just sort of like a cool refreshing water had just flowed between them. Yeah. And they're cool and they're tingly right now and they're not hurting and I'm in a calm state but I've also got this other uh, physical sensation of relief. And, but mm -hmm. it's an active relief. It's a. It feels like something's there, actively taking care of the problem, as you were, you know, describing. But yeah. I'm, you know, feeling it. So and in I and of itself, right? In and of itself, being in this calm state is a great thing. You know, if mm -hmm. we did nothing else, we could just survive in the empty space between two points. And in fact, the more of our time that we spend here, the better. Um, it's just, I agree with you, it's a great state. My experience working with people, great state for them. ICE, so that's the first two parts. We identified your experience with the medication journey this past year. Now we moved into a calm state, different peptide state. Feels good in the mind, the soul, the body feels good. The discovery of memory reconsolidation in the laboratory starting about the year 2000 is what we're going to use now in the E part, this exchange. And, and um, there's one book out um, by a psychologist who's using this technique um, to great effect. And then there's my new book, Fibromyalgia Relief, which I just published, which is out, which explains this. Otherwise, it's in research papers. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about that. Congratulations, I, I meant to say. but Yeah, thanks. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use this chemistry of the calm state and memory reconsolidation says that if you go back now and observe what you described as trauma of this past year, sadness, grief, fear, and even some anger, I'm just going to invite you now to go back and observe it because what you're doing is you're bringing the chemistry of calm back to those experiences and the understanding of memory reconsolidation is that we actually make some chemical changes to the synapses where those memories are stored in your brain. So go ahead and just observe back. I'm not saying it's going to be calm right now, but in almost every case, there will be some change. And so we go back now. I'm going to invite you to observe the specific things you observed before about your journey with the medications this past year, particularly those two in combination and see what's showing up now. When you're ready, let me know. I'm still in the calm state and the feeling the calm tingles, but already my my heart rate 
uh, has gone up significantly. I can feel it. It's, it's sort of in this anticipation of stress uh, okay. or of, of the real So that's of all we need. There's something there that's not calm. I just want you to observe the piece that's not calm now. As I said, we're not necessarily going to be calm the first time around. In fact, that's not the common thing. So by going back and observing, it's different because you're not um, you're not charged immediately. You're gonna your heart rate is increasing. Observe what's there that's not calm. You've got a physical sensation, so there may be an emotion that's showing up, and there may be another piece of the experience actually that's showing up. Anxiety, worry. Okay. And that anxiety is about, is there a particular experience? Is it future-oriented? If things go wrong again, is it anxiety about the past? Or is there an it event? Was a little bit more, uh, it was a little bit at that present time. It was uh, current state and future state in that um, the rug got pulled out from under us. How How are we going to... You know, get the the life sustaining meds that I need, and uh, and then uh, yeah, and 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 to the past because I've 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 had problems all my life, and uh, thirty years of patient burnout uh, will compound things. So it's, it was a bit of past, present, and future. Okay. So we just went back and now we identified, okay, basically on a second round of this. And notice that it is different than what came up the first time, which is more grief and trauma centered. This one's anxiety about rug got pulled out from me, could be pulled out again. I'm very, mm -hmm. um, in a very fragile state around this. Um, okay, so. You've identified. Now I'm going to invite you simply to come back to the comp space, and you may pop right back into it just by um, by that, or um, you may observe again a single point because now your consciousness, you are choosing to step out of what you just identified and step into a state of simplicity. This is the stepping back, but it's also stepping into simplicity. Because when you observe a single point, there's very little out there that takes your attention. And therefore, the body, the cells of the body and the mind, turn automatically to internal um, rest and restoration. Observe the second point, same thing. And the reason for that second point is simply so we can open up a space that's between the two points that has nothing in it. And when you observe nothing, you are actually responding to nothing. You have, you know, in the words that you like, stepped back from the things that you identified. Stepped into a non-reactive state. And in this non-reactive state, you, because you're consciously observing that nothing right now needs your attention in the outside world, your body is in rest and restoration mode again. If that tingling went away, it's probably returned. If Leg pain came yes. back as you focused on it. It's probably coming back down again. And what's exactly. happening, I mean, this is the energy, right? The consciousness, what's happening in the chemistry realm is that you are creating a different peptide that corresponds to this emotion of observing nothing, this emotion of calm. And that is the signal for all the cells of your body to move into rest and restoration mode. Their energy is no longer in react. These 50 trillion cells of your body, or 100 trillion, whatever it is, are no longer reacting to the medication or to this traumatic journey of the past. They are totally focused on your healing right now, your well-being. And as you know, that just feels delicious it to be in that does. state. It really, really does. And this yeah. is this is somebody who's. Who's, who's tried just about everything in the book to, to, to reach some sort of even, you know, one-eighth as good as this state and uh, have not achieved it. So, um, 
and there is too for me especially there's something about the the words words always have the power to help me uh focus or distance and so listening to you as I focus on the two points so when I do it myself I often talk either just mm -hmm. reciting stepping back because it, it it adds a another layer of uh, emptiness it has yeah. meaning but it it doesn't have I don't have to focus on it yeah and, yeah that's great we're now in round two okay so the first okay. one we did the the grief piece and the other associated pieces went to the calm state and then we exchanged and in my understanding and experience of it that stuff has now got different chemistry in it mm -hmm. is going to if you go back to it in the future is not going to appear the same because when you went back to it what showed up now was this anxiety about your past experience in the future if this is pulled out from you then we moved away from that into the calm state we stepped back from it we're now in a state producing the chemistry of calm and peace. That's the signal to all of your body. And now we're going to use the E, the exchange step, memory reconsolidation, around this second round that you've identified. So I'm going to invite you now to observe back on the anxiety that you identified about the past experience, but also about your future um, and the dependence, the need for having these medications, but not being sure you can get them. So go ahead and observe back on that. And when you get something there, let me know. You know, last time it was an increasing heart rate. So as you check back in there, you're looking for whatever there might be that's not calm. There was at first a little bit of the pickup of the heart rate as I went back in, but this time it felt more like something older uh, or a more conditioned response and it was much softer it was much more subtle um, I if I hadn't been looking for it I wouldn't have noticed it there was none of the weakness but there was this sort of increase in heart rate as a uh, uh, the anticipation um, so what shows up now because <clears throat> like a lot of times when, when I'm working with people, it's like, oh, I feel so much better, right? What we're doing now is I'm like, okay, we got some of the major pieces of furniture in the room right now. We've sort of reconsolidated those. But um, while we're at it here, let's see what else is on the floor. You know, there's a tennis ball in the corner to get out of the room so it's all calm and cleaned out. So instead of saying I feel good now, which is great. I'm happy about that. Let's pursue those little things, those more subtle things, just to see if there's anything there that's not calm. And it's going to be, you have the physical sensation, slightly rising heart rate. It's going to be either a pure emotion that's showing up. Wow, I feel some sadness now, or different emotion. Or it's going to be an experience that shows up. Um, you know, working with whatever it was. Um, it's a little of both, and I, and I really did want to follow this because when I went back into it, the heart rate calmed down because that was a learned response or like a, a, a sort of strange training, if you will. But what I noticed was tension, tension in my back. Um, okay, that's great. Before, from worry and partially from anticipation and it goes back to 
the f the little cumulative bits of my life where I've had success with some health issue or some medicine and it failed and it and something always went wrong or something blah 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 you know it always went back to bad or there was okay. always something new and that's where I'm feeling it this time because when we revisited it I didn't have that feeling that it was about the 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 meds this time because the thought went with me but I got my meds I am secure in my meds mm -hmm. I and I didn't feel worry it okay. felt like uh, almost muscle memory if you will like you know you you, you go through the 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 same action or the same sort of drill and structure training that kicks in when the conditions are right and uh, and uh, it's something that I uh, with the ice I've been able to sort of unlearn in bits and pieces but I really notice the tension in my back in, in my spine that was not present there before and certainly not present enough for me to notice yeah and this is the amazing thing that we have the the consciousness if, if we you know if we just learn to pay attention in these ways to physical sensation experiences which is wow there are many times when I got on a medi medication regime it worked and then it didn't work and there's an experience in the past which is uh, uh, tempering or flavoring your anticipation of the future really a fear an emotion now a fear that that could be the same thing again. I've got my medications, but what if they quit working for me? Or what if something okay. new pops up? Or what yeah. if blah blah? What if what if what if what if what if? And so I'm going to ask you a question now. Mm -hmm. That let's say three months from now, and this probably make your heart rate go up. The medications stop functioning for you. Okay, stop. You still have them as prescription, but they stop doing what they're doing now. Okay. In that case, and I only ask you this not to upset you, but I only ask you this, if that were to happen, would you prefer to be in the calm state or in an agitated state? Oh, certainly the calm state. Okay. So then, we really don't get to, like, program out the future, right? But we can do this thing of choosing the calm and icing this fear from the past, right, that accumulated from the past, we can ice that fear that accumulated from the past so that it no longer impacts your future. Well, and 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 in that regard, because you had, you had said before, or we had talked earlier, um, and I said I had got, had sort of developed the habit of, of ice, uh, of, of doing ice when I was having trouble with things or starting to have an attack, and... Uh, um, um, it's very similar to this in that if God forbid that this the situation that you mentioned does happen three months or six months or 50 months from now um, it's one of those things where I'll remember this conversation and that will help me trigger a breath space where I mm -hmm. can you know I can work with and I can go and uh, go and, and, and remember to use ice to take a step back and to to uh, uh, do that and that's that's really what I have that's how I got into the habit is just remembering that there is an option yeah. remembering that I do prefer to be in a calm state and uh, so let's use this very intentionally now about the future. And you're so you're in the calm state now, still in? Mm, yeah, I've still got a little yeah. bit of the tension from the back, but mostly. Yeah. Well, what I want to do now is go back and very intentionally, because it was a subtle thing that showed up, and yet it was a very big thing. My experience with medication is that 
even though they may help me for a time, I really ultimately can't count on them. Mm -hmm. So even having the proper supply of them, the fear is there that at some point it's going to stop working. Now that's a biggie mm -hmm. because I've got the medication, but I don't have confidence in it for, yeah, for the like long term. That, there's not so, that trust. Yeah, so I want you to go back and observe that anxiety um, that formed in the past around various experiences and also now is present as you um, live in the present and into the future with these medications and observe that from the calm space and see what shows up as you make that observation. We're now in the third round. Oh, wow. Ooh. Slid deep. So when you're ready, let me know what's showing up this time. Um, I have the first. I have the feeling that I I should mention since we're doing this for reference. Um, you're asking me, you know, you know what shows up, and uh, and and I'm pretty quick to have. Uh, an answer or a response, and uh, that's something that's come out of these sessions. But it's also something that's come out of just really listening to the first thing that pops in my head and go with that. And mm -hmm. uh, just for those that that listen, because I've I've done other things with other people, and they just don't know. They have difficulty listening to themselves or identifying or picking out what the, what this cause is and and I'm sort of going right to what I feel is the root of things pretty quickly and uh, mm -hmm. I just that just comes from I just go the first thing that pops into my head I go with it because it there's a reason it's the first thing that pops into my head yeah okay that's, so what that's what, what came up for you um, that I've had more bad experiences with medication and medicine and medical treatment in general from the moment I was even before I was out of the womb then I have had positive experiences so it's extremely difficult for me to trust that a medication any any medication, even if it's good, even if it works wonders, even even with some of the the things I've been wowed with over the past couple of years of how well it works with me, more more specifically the Adderall, um, I have this or had at least it's not quite there anymore, but had this construct in my head that. It was going to desert me like a uh, a bad parent or a uh, a bad relationship or, or or you know I liken it to uh, to oh they always leave me type type of sentimentality and uh, mm -hmm. and the emotion about that is that a fear anger sadness what shows up There's a tension with there's a physical tension with it. Okay. But where do you not, feel that? Uh, mostly in the back, in my okay. uh, lower back, lower mid back, but it, it sort of goes up all the way to the spine. But it's really sort of rooted in the uh, lumbar and and hips. Okay. And this, they kind of a couple of muscles are actually sort of twitching it a, a little bit. Um. It's really a feeling of, and you can classify it how, however you feel best, but it's this feeling of resignation. And I definitely want to change that because I don't consciously feel resigned to that always being the case. Um, but the younger me, and uh, I went so many years without a really any good experience just going from one thing 
the next and always the side effects were so horrible that um, and so many things that goes with it that the not being outwardly sick enough for the the teachers and the faculty and the people to understand or take seriously and it's it's all tied up in this not not but this web of, of stuff that's sort of spanned out through my lower back and just sort of freezing everything in this sort of paralysis and it comes down to that I can't or I have not been able to truly really trust medicine of any sort uh, for any length of time uh, and uh, I didn't really realize that until just now just going through this okay and so do you see how like when we started right it was really this anxiety this grief about this whole journey you've been through and what has the focus been it's been as necessary to get those medications mm -hmm. and so that's been the focus and now as you calm that literally as those peptides are exchanged and that's calm you no longer need to be reactive to that you know and now something can show up that is more subtle because the the thing that was in front of you causing um, the anxiety is is calm mm -hmm. but this is actually even though that other one was like more in your face this one is really more foundational oh very and and I really yeah. like to change it because I don't and and there was a time that I would have believed this with all my being but this is but that time is is past and uh, it's been passed for a long time, but it's so, like you said, rooted in my foundation. It's like uh, these cement cobwebs, and I do believe that there are things, medications, or like with the ice method, I've, I've had so many other options for treatment, and uh, that it sort of all comes down to this thought that things are only going to get worse as time goes on not better and uh, yeah. that's you know that's the at dig all the way down that's the root and right and we only get to that because those big pressing issues now mm -hmm. calm those down so as you pay attention now to the emotion that's attached to um, things are just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. What shows up? What's the emotion that's around that? Anger, fear, sadness, some variant? Right now it's difficult because I'm so outside or I mean it's still affecting me because it's still in my back. Mm -hmm. But I'm so much in the calm state it's sort of a, a clinical or analytical divorced of emotion and uh, I know but there are times when I, this this thing that, that has sprung from the root of it's you know it's always it's just gonna get worse yeah um, has reared up and at those points in time there's always been so much despair and de true depression um, hopelessness, uh, even occasionally uh, feelings of just it would be, you know, better to be dead than have to continue down a sliding slope, you know, from where I am at mm -hmm. now. So I understand that it's much preferable to feel the calm state right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but what I'm going to invite you to do now is and we don't need to go far into this because we're not going to get stuck in it mm -hmm. but I just want you, you you identified what those emotions are I just want you to go in and actually touch them now so that you can just feel them in your body just for a moment that may because what we're doing in scientifically what we're doing is we're activating those memories 
which means that then they can be replaced, the, the emotional peptides that are in them. If we don't access them, um, they don't become, in the scientific term, they don't become labile and they're not replaceable. So I'm just going to invite you um, just to access them as all well for just a second. It may take some doing because it's sort of like even <laughs> while being in a calm state, I think I've thrown up some walls between them and myself because I, I uh, want you know have wanted to get rid of them and and uh, but uh, this is a this is a much better way than than walling it off. Well, and what's the normal way we get rid of them? We run in the opposite direction. So I'm actually asking you to do something very counterintuitive, which is yeah. Just observe them for a moment and let yourself feel them just for a moment. Not long. I just want you to access the emotion. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. I'm having trouble, trouble accessing it. I want to find a, a, a despair moment or something. And, uh, what's the easiest way to go through? Uh, I think probably the isolation that all of the stuff has caused is pretty pretty easy way to go in. Yeah, if you, or if you can just go back to an experience, a time when you um, experienced this hopelessness, that they took you off a of medication or something, and you, you had the feelings of despair. If you go back to the experience of it, then you can often feel the emotion because you have the context for it. I've got a couple incidents because I had... Uh, I had proved positive that there there was stuff that would work well for me, and that was my great year of 2010. And so if I pick a few points when the things started to go south afterwards, uh, I think that will do it. Yeah, there we go. And again, it goes for the spine, only this time the upper spine. Um, guilt and shame. Loneliness. Forlorn. Watching life and the world pass you by. And the emotion of that is? Uh, despair. So okay. sadness and uh, fear. Mm -hmm. Is it still showing up in your back or elsewhere? No, it sort of spiked initially, but as I, as I touched each one... Uh, touch specific instances of them. Um, the lower back still is with me, but I've actually had a lot of work done on my lower back, so it could be, at this point, it could just be the position I'm laying in, adding a little bit to it. But the uh, my my upper back just all had all of a sudden spiked when I finally started touching stuff and it that was the the guilt and the shame because I had started trying to uh, help someone with their business because I was uh, even though I was still stuck at home most of the time I I had skills and I had to phone in a computer and I was going to try to help somebody and they were going to uh, do me a solid back and, and I wasn't able to come forward and and that uh, not being able to be responsible or being irresponsible in, in, in a certain aspect really affected me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that just seeing, you know, friends and family and loved ones and move on and move out and uh, move on with their lives and I sort of get left behind because it's, you know, an ongoing thing with me and 
I can't always even even meet them halfway. And there's that sadness more so than ever anything else. Sadness when looking at the past and present. Fear is more of a future thing. Okay. All right. So if if you imagine that your emotions like on a graph or are, you know, a line, mm -hmm. then what's happening chemically in your body, these peptides that are being created, is is the exact same graph of chemicals being created in response to these emotions that you're feeling. And the reason that we're going back and accessing them right now, um, even though it's not pleasant, is just so that they become active. And they have something like four hours now in which they either need to reset in the same way or we bring a different emotion back into the junction, the synapse, of these memories. And it's possible to do that now because these are active, because you have this four-hour window where basically the glue got loose and either they're going to re-glue the same way or we're going to bring something in. Okay, so this is the identify step. Now we're simply going to do the very simple thing like we did before, and it doesn't matter the intensity or the depth, right? You had real intense before. This didn't seem so big, and then you got into it. And it's like, wow, this is really, really fundamental and large, mm -hmm. both emotionally and in terms of experiences of life. Right. And it doesn't matter how big it is. I mean, I work with people with PTSD on occasion. It doesn't matter the severity. What matters is that we've identified it. And so now off to the comp space. I just invite you to observe that single point. And as you observe that single point, if it's a really huge thing, you might find your attention drifting off it. As soon as you recognize that, just bring it back to it. Because in the observing of a single point, our consciousness is now fixed on a single item rather than all of this big stuff that you just identified in your life. And because our consciousness is focused on a single item, we now produce a chemistry that corresponds to really this pretty simple little process of observing a single point. We're only like a minute away from the intensity of what you were experiencing but this is the choice to make. And the body then responds to whatever the mind chooses. So if with your consciousness in the midst of these big things, we can simply choose to step out and step back and observe a single point, then the chemistry of our body begins to simplify and calm down. Now when you're ready, observe a second point. Same exact thing. In the observation of that point, our consciousness body is simplifying and now you can observe that there's a space in between those two points and when you observe that space it's in between these two points there's now nothing to react to in the outside world the chemistry of calm is created um, as a response to consciousness these peptides those flow out to all the cells of your body fight or flight mode is turned off and we're back in rest mode and that's the process for us to learn and I agree, it's nice to have someone speak us through it, um, but that's what you're doing when you do it, and you're, you know, you become very um, proficient at choosing to do that in situations. So it's great to come back and kind of, you know, just review this, but also to get to some new stuff. It, it is, right. and, and and going deeper, and and just, uh, and you're uh, so helpful and gifted at honing in, and just the your words have power of them own of their own and it's just uh, appreciative because I I can stare at a at a space but my mind will draw whatever and uh, uh, however when I stare at you know I, I put my attention on staring at a space and you're talking about what's going on and what's happening and the, the process and whatever I let it's really easy for me to let that fill my mind and so my mind's not doing anything except looking at that space and it's uh, not trying to not trying to fill that empty emptiness with something yeah especially sure. the, uh, the, the the painful stuff yeah sure enough the 
tension just moved right on my back. I actually feel like I'm slowly rotating like on a ship or something. <laughs> Very good. We're out of the storm and in the harbor now. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so so this is the calm. We're on our third round basically, just sort of keeping track. There's no magic to the numbers. Sometimes it's 20 rounds, right? But we're on the third one now in the calm state. Now we're going to exchange peptides. We're going to use the phenomenon of memory reconsolidation, go back in and replace old peptides with these new calm ones. So I'm going to invite you to step back into that loneliness, despair, um, the specific memories that were showing up, the specific instances you were going back to, and observe them and see what's there now. There's the, just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of tension in my back, but mostly it's just a sense of, for lack of a better term, love and just wanting to hug that past self and uh, wow, okay. give it a smile. Because no, that's it, pretty profound. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly did, you know, need it back then at those points. And as I say that and as I sort of do that in my head, that tension sort of melts. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so we're getting pretty far along in this session, but let's just do a little bit more. It's like, okay, we got the big pieces of furniture out of the room. Now, there were some tennis balls and small, a couple books laying around on the floor. Those are out. You said the tiniest bit of tension in the back. So just um, observe that, you know, maybe there's a little dust left. I'm going to go get the dust mop, and I'm going to get in the corners, and just check for what's there. And so as you do that, the trigger, the signal there is there's a little bit left in the back. So just start mopping around, around this idea that um, life's just going to get worse. It's not going to get better. The emotions, the loneliness, the despair, um, the events that showed up, maybe there's another event. Just see what's there. And if you get anything, let me know. Or if the room is completely cleared out, then we're finished for today. something there. Shows up on my wrist. That might be the second sum, but There's something else, and I kind of think of it as a cross between a twirled up candy cane and a a, a mountain range. They're uh, separate but part of the same thing, and. Uh, it might, I think it's another sort of big one, and uh, not as uh, 
fundamentally uh, or not a, quite as much of the foundation, but uh, also a problem also in there because the uh, the pain I'm getting is different. It's in my joints, uh, especially my hands, where I would I would do things, and it's uh, more of a preventative feeling. Um, uh, and it's tied in with the uh, things won't get better, but it's more of a you you won't succeed, so it's better not to try. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that is a biggie. <laughs> yeah, and my, my for I can't, it's, but every oh gosh. Yeah, that's a biggie because my hand is hurt. I mean, every joint, all in my fingers, it's inexplicable. That that's mm -hmm. the biggie. That's that's a biggie right okay. there. So I thought we were finished, but we're not quite finished yet. I apologize. <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> I'm not in a hurry. I mean, so here's the deal: is that we never know what's showing up. Now, this would not have showed up unless that last layer was calmed down. This is true, this is true. And this is something I've even been aware of more so than the other one. The other one, the the not trusting that medication and ultimately things are never going to get better, I I was sort of aware of that of my feelings that things were never going to get better, but I attributed that to the pain and the depression and the just the, mm -hmm. the unknowing. And uh, that really hinged on just being able to trust medication or, or trust that, that things will work and things will get better. Yeah. But this, uh, uh, this is uh, a problem I've had with like projects and trying to, tr trying to push through. And as I've spoken to, to you before, I've, I've had uh, a novel in the works for a while now with uh, editors from publishing, major publishing houses interested in it. And it's one of the things that, for the life of me, I just cannot get done. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the things I was thinking of. And it just, where I would type. Okay. So, um, just in terms of explanation, um, you know, no news to you, but... but we have experiences all through our life and every time we have an experience as i said that experience has emotion with it mm -hmm. that emotion has a chemi a chemical trail that goes with it that exactly corresponds to the emotion and then those are stored so i would be willing to bet a nickel that somewhere in your early life you had an experience or a number of experiences where the safest thing to do was to draw back and do nothing. That mm -hmm. The doing of something could have been a dangerous thing in your two-year-old mind or whatever it was. And I don't know dates, don't, I don't know if this happened or not, but what I'm confident in, it, in is that every moment of our life is an emotional experience to which there's a chemistry that's stored about it. If we're in a state with no emotion, there's nothing to store. So for some reason now, a pattern then, like it is safer to not get involved in this, it's safer to not do this project, that is, is present for you. Nothing wrong with that, it's just what has arisen that is um, through the past, oh. you're now aware of it. And so actually, just as an openness to everything in your life that's sort of has that pattern in it now, we can at least some of it, and perhaps a lot of it, maybe even all of it, is active for the next four hours. And whatever's not active, whenever it shows up for you, you can just do this process in the future. Okay, but I'm going to invite you now to observe a point again. We take what we identified. We don't have to get the whole burrito. We just get whatever we get. Um, you observe that point. And again now, something big in your life that actually was impacting your hands and the way they were feeling, you're now making a conscious choice to move into a calm state. And that conscious choice now is being reflected in the chemistry of your mind and therefore also your body.
And when you're ready, I invite you to observe the second point. Okay, we're now in the fourth round of this. Maybe there would have only been one. Maybe there's ten more ahead. We just simply take whatever comes up. After you observe the second point, now there's a space that's in between and we observe that space that has nothing in it. And as we observe that space that has nothing in it, we have consciously stepped outside of, stepped back from, moved into a non-reactive place to that thing which really did impact us just a moment ago. And from this calm space, in which you're observing nothing in the outside world, a space that has nothing in it. The emotion is calm, therefore the chemistry that gets created is calm. This peptide of calm goes out to all the cells of your body and you may notice that your hands and wrists have moved back to a more relaxed place. This is the second part of the ice round this calm state and there's nothing wrong with staying here as long as you want no I mean I'm I, I'm in the calm state but I'm, I'm starting to cry from yeah. the uh, so the, typically what we do in our life unless we know this process right we get in a calm state you know meditate a little bit and then we would go on with our life we would move forward and four hours later because we never came back and exchanged peptides, those ones that you, those big ones about um, uh, it's safer not to, to get involved, they would re cement in the same way, which is what's been happening your whole life. So this really is a profound process here now where, you know, if we didn't have this, we'd, oh, I feel good. Somebody help me to relax. It's so great. Four hours later, the old memories reconsolidate the same way and you need to come back and do this thing again mm -hmm. next week. Instead, what we do with the exchange step with memory reconsolidation, right now I'm going to invite you to observe back to those things that showed up. The book, early memories, emotions, whatever. Just observe back and see what's there now. Tears. Okay. But um, the good kind, um, release, recognition, grief, grieving, actual grieving, the, the good part of the process, the, the letting go, and the me just hugging this little boy who... Uh, held back. Okay. And no pain in the hands. Okay. And how about the back? Mm, little tension in the lower back, but I honestly think that's the uh, uh, recent uh, back surgery. Okay. Um, it doesn't feel... It doesn't feel as it did before. Okay. So, you know, in real life, you got to kind of end these rounds at some point, not because they're ended. You'll come back to them again later, but it seems like a good stopping point. What you would do um, is just, you know, you might even make a few notes for yourself. Um, we actually have this video, so you've got the record of it. I know. I, later, I really want to be able to look at this again because this is a yeah. good thing for me. Um, yeah, so if everything is gone well technologically, you'll have this record of this. Um, I, yeah. Then, then you, know. you, can, you can just check back in with the pieces we've gone through and see what's there. And if there's anything that's not calm, at some point you, we realize, oh, here's another opportunity. You know, it's not, oh, darn, there's something else. It's like, oh, cool, here's something that can become calm so that I'm free to move forward in the way that I choose. You have a lot more freedom right now relative to your medications mm -hmm. than you did, you know, an hour and a half ago. Because you're you're 
relationship to your medications an hour and a half ago was reactive. This fear that one, they wouldn't work, two, they'd be taken away, three, why try anyway about this oh, yeah, whole the, thing because it's not to work. The, the mental constraints that I put on myself ages and ages ago are, are much more of a hindrance than the medication issues. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm just so, I mean, I cannot express to you, I mean, I have been aware of, of especially the last one, the, the not to try, but it wasn't until, and I've been trying to figure out why that is, why that started, why that began to, to, to help get rid of it. And it hasn't been until this, this session just a few minutes ago that the the links formed and I just I, I truly am I'm shedding tears because I I found it and mm. it's okay to let it I know how to let it go I know where the root is I know um, it's rooted in well stuff I you know, won't go into but also some of the things that I've told you about before is me being a strange child and uh, not having many friends because I couldn't relate to other kids, but it was uh, it it starts from that, and it picked up with a bunch of other things and stuff outside my control and not my fault. And but uh, I didn't know where it began, and uh, I I do now, and moving past that is going to be one of the greatest things in my life. Hmm, that's really cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, in this process, I mean, uh, we're kind of reaching the close here, but in this mm -hmm. process, what there is to do is simply to follow the trail. You know, and, and I, I just have so much fun working with this ICE method with people because it's, it's a pretty simple three-step process. You know, you identify uh -huh. whatever is there. And we didn't identify this fourth piece in the first round, right? It, it never would have showed up except that we just are running um, – what does show up, we identify it, move into a calm state, and then exchange those peptides again. Oh, and, and then you take never... the next piece. So there may be more pieces on your journey. I'm positive, actually, that there are. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> there probably are. And this is the, for, for ours, this is sort of the longest, you know, we've never gone to four before mm -hmm. uh, in any of the, the, the sessions. And a lot, many times in the past, I've just been so blissed out, we just ended it there, but uh, you know the right time for the the right discovery and things like that, but yeah, uh, I just just so much wow and yes I, I will follow it through. And do you need any uh, uh, want me to say anything else for reference or um, no? I you know I think we're actually good. Um, so I want to tell you what. You know, I've told you before, what I tell everybody is if something big shows up such that you can't get back into the calm state, I want you to let me know. I want you to drop me an email or be in communication with me. Um, so together we can take care of that. My guess is you can deal with things on your own pretty well. Um, but what I'd like for you to do is in a, you know, in a day or two, just check in by email. And um, that way <clears throat> I want to know how things are going for you. And we can be in communication to make sure that... Um, you're on a good path, and you're going to have this this video to look at, which is um, which is really great. Um, so yeah. let's stay in communication about this, and, and we'll we'll just go from here. Thanks. All right, we'll we'll do. Thank you so much. And actually, uh, with this video, I'm going to show it to somebody because uh, this I, I know of at least two people that I can really really benefit from this, and from All your right. help. Well, um, we'll see if the video comes out here. We'll stop the broadcast and we'll uh, we'll get it up and I'll get the link over to you. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. All right. You take care. You too. I have no.